when you get bored, what do you do? If you're able, you go outside and take a walk. We're just walking. This will be our this will be our fifth time today. Uh, I think it is. <laughs> I tried to three with that other camera out, but no, it took too long to upload them. It took too long to. It didn't take too long to upload it, it took too long to prepare. Mr. Wolf Spider. <laughs> I won't hit you. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's my neighbor. Her name's Katie too. <laughs> Her name's Katie also. <laughs> She said she wouldn't hit me, <laughs> run over me. <laughs> Goodbye, yellow jackets. I finally called that uh, W4W Mosquito Repellent Company, and uh, they said I had to have a defuser to use that stuff. Uh, they've got a coil, something apparently that you can set on fire and, or something. Uh, Anyways, but uh, I asked a man, he said, uh, I asked a man, I said, uh, I said, I ain't got no defuser. Uh, I think that's the thing that you plug up and uh, it gets hot. And uh, uh, it's got several uh, kinds of oil in it mixed together. And uh, I asked him about putting it in the bowl, uh, setting it outside the sun. He said, you can try that. He said, if it don't work, call me back. Well, that de defuser, that little four ounce bottle of oil that Darlene sent me was uh, about $16. <laughs> it's, it's got several kinds of oil in it, uh, six or eight or 10. He said, you could use it to make candles, make your own scented candles, and I don't know what all. But uh, I, I won't be uh, buying one of his defusers. Seemed like it was 30 or $40. Just for the thing that you look me like something you plug in <laughs> and it apparently heats the oil never did get no uh, real good directions not off the box not off the bottle on how to, it said on the bottle it said uh, uh follow the instructions on the label and uh, i looked on the box and read on the box and the box said the same thing Followed directions on the label. <laughs> and it never did really say exactly how to use it. It didn't say it didn't say how many drops or nothing.
Well, here we are. We had us a hamburger patty. Of course, I baked my stuff in the oven and uh, it drawed up to nothing. But uh, I had some cherry tomatoes I got from Walmart and some lettuce and uh, some celery, some bell pepper, and uh, some cucumber that I got from uh, Miss Weaver, my neighbor across the street. And so we had a salad with a balsamic vinaigrette dressing. Praise God for my friends. Thank you, God, for my blessings. My uh, my son's uncle Scott, his mother's brother, owns that place I live in. And that's a blessing. I've been there. I've been there about five years. <laughs> I'm surprised they told me sometime during that five years that they needed the place back. My son lived in it, and he's got stuff stored in it that he's collected over the years, and he lived it, he's lived in it off and on a few times. I reckon Scott bought it to uh, sell and make money, and apparently uh, he never did sell it. I don't pay rent, but I do pay on the power bill. And I do all I can do to keep the power bill down. Sometimes it's two dollars a day, and sometimes it's three dollars a day. Uh, I go out there and write the kilowatt hours down for a 24-hour period, and multiply it by the kilowatts per hour that they charge, and figure it up. And some days it's two dollars, some days it's three. It's not too bad to have an old window air conditioning unit running. The central heat and air don't work. Well, the central air don't because it's leaked all the coolant stuff out. And the heat don't work because there's holes in the ductwork. Uh, the metal ductwork under there. The pipes that uh, run the heat from the heat unit to each room, to each vent, is, uh, got holes in it and disconnected from the heat unit. And uh, it's dropped down under there, and uh, it's real close to the ground and hard to get under. So we uh, we use space heaters, and space heaters are dangerous. But we get by, and uh, in the wintertime, it, it does go up a lot because of the heat. Air conditioning. A window unit's uh, cheaper than uh, space heaters. <laughs> But we uh we check our cords often in the wintertime and and uh fix the heat units where they cycle in and out. I've got an oil heater I use in that small bedroom where I sleep and I've got two other heaters that I use in the living room. I don't don't usually put anything in the bathroom. Uh there's a breaker in there, one of those GFI switches and every time I plug something in the head it throws that breaker. And uh, the lights in there don't have no power uh, unless you turn the uh, light switch on. The lights, the lights above the sink and overhead light and, and the outlet on the wall don't have no power uh, unless everything's on. And it loads it up pretty quick. So it throws that little breaker in, the, in that receptacle that messes things up. I'm sure there's probably a way to correct that. Probably by putting another GFI in there and seeing if that would help it. There happens to be one there. Somewhere or another. Well, it may not be a GFI. I think it's just a regular switch. Anyways, I have plugged uh, heaters up in that bedroom next to the bathroom and run them, hoping it would warm the whole area. And, uh, for some reason, the cord on the heater seemed to heat up awful fast. Got extra hot, so we don't heat the bathroom. Praise God, the water don't freeze. We got to get a spigot cover for the outside water faucet. 
I guess I'll get one of them big ceramic ones. And uh, it's at an angle and uh, be hard to attach a spigot to. So uh, we're going to take some glue when it comes time and and uh, glue that styrofoam cover over it. Glue it to the cement wall around it. And uh, next spring, when we need the water hose, if God's willing and we're still here and everything, uh, just take a hammer and bust that styrofoam off. You see that dead pine tree there? You see that brown? That's in my neighbor's front yard. And limbs are going to start falling off of it. They already are down toward the bottom. And one day it's going to fall over. It leans this way anyway. It'll be across the driveway. And there's that skinny one there. I'm just on the other side of the fence. It's been rotting and looking like it's going to fall for several years. It ain't fell yet. I just hope they don't fall on the, somebody's vehicle while they're here. And I've got tree limbs uh, on that big oak tree up there above the house that are falling off and I uh, have to watch people where they park and, and uh, tell them not to park under the, the limbs. <laughs> tree surgeons are expensive. I ain't got no money. All I get is a little disability check and some food stamps. Now getting cricket there on this side of the barn. I ain't gonna walk out there now. Get back to the house. God bless you, friends. There's a lady in uh, Canada. A lady named Sharon contacted me. She said she wished I had some, somebody to walk with me. She said if you live close by, she'd walk with me. <laughs> I asked her if she had a YouTube channel, which she does, or she couldn't be commenting, but I asked her if she could uh, play some video on it. I told her I'd love to see what she looked like. I got lots of people I don't know what they look like. My friend Kay in Ohio, I was attracted to her, and I found out she's married and happily married. <laughs> she's a good friend. She smokes and would like to quit, and she's worried about her salvation. She's afraid she's lost her salvation. She says she backslid, and I've tried to help her along the way and tell her how to renew her relationship with Jesus and she still worries God bless her I took some of that mosquito repellent that Darlene sent me and put it on top of that light fixture there I can see it's shining and slimy on it and hoping the sun would heat it and have some effect on the uh mosquitoes coming here and uh, all them oils in it, about 10 of them, maybe it would have some effect on the wasp and the hornet and stuff like that coming. But I don't think it's going to do any good there. But on the back porch, uh, on the handrail like this, uh, I got a plastic bowl with a few drops of it in it. <coughs> the sun shined on it. I couldn't smell it. But anyways, there's a little orange cat. He's probably going to... They seem to like to come back to the same place that they used before. Use the bathroom, same place. I had an old cat one time. He would come to the house. He was... He was, he was somebody's pet, and uh, it got winter time, and uh, I laid him in the house, and he sprayed the edge of the couch, and peed, and caught him a couple of times about the 
dump in the floor, poopy. And uh, so uh, I finally got me a litter pan and some litter, and uh, I caught him about to dump one day, and uh, I put him over in that litter, litter pan, and uh, after he made that pile in that litter pan, and uh, he could come back and smell it, uh, uh, he... He started, uh, he started using the litter pan. He knew that was the place to go then. He got old on me and he died. He died, he died, he died a horrible death. He was old, he couldn't hear. His, his ears was full of wax and stuff and I tried to clean them out and he, he, he still couldn't hear and, and uh, he died a he died a he died a horrible death. He was laying on his side and he was taking deep breaths and I rolled him over and one eye was uh one eye was messed up. One side of his body was already in the dying process. So I kinda covered him up and left him alone until he uh, died in peace as peaceful as possible I can't afford to take care of animals I ain't got no money I ain't never had none we've always done the best we could and if we get run over under cars and trucks and out in the road you just deal with it I hope the little cat's next door that little cat that little white cat, I hope she don't get run over under somebody's car. Tom, he likes to go across the road just like Big Tom did when I had him. Big Tom, he went down the driveway there one day, went across the road up in the woods. He'd come back beat up sometimes with broke legs and his head tore up and ears and uh, bleeding and uh, worked on him and worked on him and worked on him. He'd come around long, for a long time and uh, I'd see him up in the woods eating at the feeding station behind the house and I thought he was a wild cat. And one night he was out here on the front and I put some cat food down on the step at the bottom and uh, he come over and started eating it. And I reached out and petted him and I realized then he'd been somebody's cat. We made buddies after that. And I did the best I could to take care of him. And one day he went down the driveway and walked off, just walked off and never did come back. There's Mr. Tom laying out there. He's got cat food. They still a bit in Whitey's bowl. I ain't changed the water yet. That'd be a good thing to do. God bless you, friends. Have a great evening.